Hey there, people! So today I am bringing you my new All Terraria Mounts Guide for 1.4 Journeys and, and older versions. I want this to be kind of an all-in-one reference, so I will be covering all mounts available in Terraria with the stats, the abilities, and how to get them. I will be using the version number as sort of a shorthand for uh, when each mountain was added and so that you can figure out what's available on whatever platform you might be playing on. I don't want to have to mention platforms all the way through the video, different systems. So uh, first of all, let's talk about that. Uh, first of all, 3DS and older console versions that never got the updates, never downloaded the updates, will not have mounts at all. Uh, the old gen consoles that were updated, if you downloaded the update for your old gen consoles, and also the pre-1.3 mobile version, if you weren't able to get the new version, uh, those will have up to the 1.2.4 mount. Specifically by old gen consoles, I mean Xbox 360, PS3, Wii U, and PS Vita if you downloaded the updates that were released for those. Uh, as of right now, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Mobile uh, have the 1.3 version uh, and they will, all of those systems will be getting the 1.4 uh, update. The 1.4 is PC only as of the recording of this video, but uh, the new gen consoles and mobile uh, will be getting it. So some mounts are also expert or master mode only. They will be marked as such. I'll be giving you slides with the statistics and information. Um, expert mode only exists in 1.3 and newer, and master mode only exists in 1.4. So that's the explanation of that. Another thing that I want to go over uh, quickly is that ground-based mounts do also benefit from double jump, uh, water and lava walking abilities, and fall damage accessories. But mounts do not gain additional speed boosts from speed boosting accessories. So uh, summon damage boosts also usually apply to charge impact damage from mounts. Some of the mounts can do charge uh, charge through enemies or add enemies and damage them. Uh, summon damage boosts will apply to those, but not to other attacks that your minions might do. So, let's just demonstrate that quickly. Uh, the buddy mount does not natively uh, swim or float in water, but if I equip Terra Spark Boots, which can walk on water, then it can too, and that applies to other ground-based mounts as well. Um, and of course you can go below the surface if you want to. And likewise, uh, this particular mount does not natively have a double jump, but if I equip a double jump accessory like this green horseshoe balloon, boom, it can do that as well. So uh, those kind of accessories do apply. Uh, however, um, speed boosts do not. So that's just to help you with using your mount. And uh, let's get right on into actually talking about the mounts. So first of all, well, the first pre-hard mode mount that we're going to talk about is the bunny mount. So uh, the bunny mount can accelerate to a top speed of 38 miles per hour as rated in the game. It was added in version 1.2.4, so all versions that have mounts have the bunny mount. Um, the bunny mount also does negate fall damage and has a jump that is pretty high. It jumps higher than you normally can. It is obtained from the angler NPC as a reward for completing the fifth fishing quest in a world uh, on 1.3 or later, or it's the 10th angler quest on the older 1.2 equivalent, 1.2.4 equivalent versions. So let's just give you a quick little demonstration of the bunny mount in action beyond what I showed you there. So uh, it can jump about yay high. <laughs> it it uh, gradually accelerates up to a faster top speed as well. So it is uh, obviously quicker than you can run with no accessories equipped. I did unequip those accessories, even though they're in my vanity slot, so you can still see them. Uh, so just accelerates, kind of like if you're using uh, boots to run and so on, and that's the bunny mount. Now, uh, next one we're gonna talk about is the uh, turtle mount. So that's the hardy saddle. Sorry, the bunny mount is summoned by the fuzzy carrot item. The turtle mount is summoned by the hardy saddle. And the turtle mount uh, also was added in 1.2.4, so all versions that have mounts have it. Uh, it can swim quickly up to 36 miles per hour, but it is slow on land at only 10 miles per hour. It's obtained from fishing. Uh, you have a chance to find it in golden and titanium fishing crates. It's around a one in 10 chance. If you get those crates, chance of getting those crates is a whole other matter that is dependent on your fishing power. So let's just demonstrate that one quickly now. So the hardy saddle, 
Uh, yes, very slow when it's just walking on land. Actually slower maybe. Well, I don't know if it's slower than you are with nothing. But uh, it does swim quickly. So if I get into a bit of water here, it will suddenly be moving quicker. And it can swim. Obviously, you want a little more depth of water to really demonstrate that. So let's go across over here. This is why I chose this location. If you get it in a good bit of water, it actually moves quite quickly. So if you're in the ocean or you have a very large fishing area or something, uh, it can also swim, so to speak, in that uh, you can effectively, it's like jumping when you're already in the water. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of about it. Um, that's the turtle mount. So let's move along then and we'll talk about next the slime mount which is summoned by the slimy saddle again This is also available in all versions uh, The slime mount jumps quite high auto jumps if you hold the jump button down and it moves on land up to 20 miles per hour It likewise uh, actually not likewise, but it doubles the falling speed uh, while cutting fall damage in half so your normal fall speed it will actually allow you to fall twice as quickly which is useful if you're digging elevators and you want to get down them faster uh, it also again cuts fall damage in half and it floats on water uh, also one thing that was changed in 1.3 and newer versions it can also bounce on enemies from above inflicting uh, 40 damage so if you are on one of the updated platforms you can stomp like Mario on the heads of your enemies and uh, Damage them that way which makes it actually really useful in certain boss fights and so on as well It has a one in four chance to drop from King Slime in normal mode or a one in two chance if you're playing in expert or master mode so Let's demonstrate the slime mount There it is you can see, uh, again, jumps actually quite high. And uh, if you have a bit of water, it sort of bobs up and down near the surface, as you can see. It actually cannot go below the surface further than that. So uh, no use trying to go over and swim with it. <laughs> but uh, it's actually quite a useful mount, surprisingly. I mean, it doesn't seem that exciting, but uh, it's actually quite useful in boss fights and, as I say, going down elevators and that kind of thing. So... Uh, next one that we're going to talk about is the bee mount summoned by the honeyed goggles now This is effectively uh, the main thing that can allow you to fly in pre hard mode. It has likewise a uh, Very slow speed kind of like the hardy saddle uh, 10 miles per hour on ground But it can fly up to 31 miles per hour for a short period before it gets tired So it doesn't fly forever, but it will uh, allow you to fly a certain distance um, it prevents fall damage completely, but cannot be used in water at all. It will despawn if you enter liquids and will not allow you to spawn it if you're in a liquid. Uh, flight time for the bee mount can actually be increased by flying and jumping accessories, like that double jump accessory, and also actually by resummoning it. Uh, the honeyed goggles are obtained as a drop from the queen bee. It's a 1 in 20 chance if you're playing in normal mode, or a 1 in 9 chance if you're playing in expert or master mode. That, of course, is only 1.3 and onward. Um, it's actually a lower chance, though, in general. Uh, obviously, expert master don't exist on the older versions but uh, if you're playing on one of the older 1.2.4 equivalent versions it's a much lower chance to get it actually it's really hard to get on those versions it's hard enough even on the newer ones so uh, let's demonstrate the honeyed goggles as I say it can fly it can fly pretty high actually now I don't know if this is somehow using um these uh see this is not equipped so i don't know if they extended the flight time on this now or what because i swear it was not uh able to fly so high in old versions but uh, as you can see and there it is it despawns as soon as i actually go in the water um it should not be using that uh maybe i'll put that there just in case <laughs> um yeah, I remember this getting tired a lot faster. That's what I remember. Oh, hey, look, a floating island. I haven't fully explored this world. Uh, so as you can see, though, it can actually fly for quite a long time now. And I don't think this was the case before. Oh, it finally got tired. 
but as you can see, you can use it to explore things and find things like floating islands. So uh, there you go. Um, now those are all the ones that uh, are in pre-hard mode that are also available on all versions. So I'm gonna get into some new ones that are 1.4 only uh, that are also available in pre-hard mode in just a second here. Okay, so there are actually five or seven, depending how you want to count it, uh, mounts that are added in 1.4 that are specific to pre-hard mode, available in pre-hard mode. The first one I'm gonna talk about is the pogo stick. So the pogo stick moves at up to 29 miles per hour and can jump quite high. Uh, jumping when you're already in the air performs a flip, so you can do little tricks with it. It doubles fall speed, but does not eliminate fall damage. It only reduces it. Uh, it is sold by the party girl for 25 gold at any time. So once you uh, get the party girl, find the party girl, then you can get the um, pogo stick mount. So here we are, pogo stick. As I say, you can flip and it jumps high and it does not reduce or it does not eliminate fall damage. It's lucky maybe that I fell in the water there. I was going to see how much it reduced it. But uh, there we go. And uh, yeah, it moves fairly quickly. It does not fly, so I can get stuck in a pit like that. But uh, there you go, it jumps reasonably high. Does not natively have double jump, but you can do funny little tricks with it. So that's the pogo stick. Uh, let's then talk about the flamingo. So the flamingo is summoned by the mollusk whistle. Uh, pogo stick is just an item. It has the same name as the mount itself, but the mollusk whistle item summons the flamingo mount. Uh, it floats on water and can dive by holding down. When you dive deep enough, it can actually launch high out of the water. It also greatly reduces fall damage and accelerates quickly to a maximum speed of 38 miles per hour. Again, doesn't eliminate damage. Some of them, it's interesting, um, some of them reduce fall damage by a certain amount, some of them reduce it by a greater amount, some reduce it to just one point, and some don't reduce it at all, uh, or some eliminate it at all. Um, so this one reduces it by a fair bit. Uh, it is sold by the zoologist uh, for 20 gold after completing 25% of the bestiary, which works out to 130 entries. So let's then demonstrate the flamingo. Mollusk whistle, equip that, and there we go. We have a flamingo and it runs pretty quickly, but it's got those special uh, water properties as well. So you can see most mounts actually are slowed down by water and this one is no exception, but uh, not just floating on water. If you hold down, it actually goes below the surface and can come back up again. So it's an interesting little thing there. And you can see uh, if I come, if I go down far enough, then it launches out. So let's go down farther, all the way down here. And yeah, supposedly you can have it launch like way out. So it depends completely on like how far down you actually go and how much water you're in. I guess you could test this out. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm holding uh, directions. So maybe I should stop manipulating the directions at all. Eh, it doesn't launch that. I don't know. Wiki says that it can launch like way out. So maybe I need like a lot more water for that to happen. I don't know. But uh, let's move along to the next one. Next one we're going to talk about is the horses and the saddles. So uh, this is actually a set of three mounts. That's why I talked about not being able to count them <laughs> as uh, specific a number. It depends on your perspective, I guess. So there are three types of horses summoned by three saddles. Uh, there's the Dusty Rawhide Saddle, which summons the Painted Horse, the Royal Gilded Saddle, which summons the Majestic Horse, the Black Studded Saddle, which summons the Dark Horse, and all three of these are actually functionally identical. Uh, they will actually damage enemies once they release or once they reach their maximum 40 mile per hour speed, and they are sold by the zoologist for 25 gold each after 30% or 156 entries are revealed in the bestiary. So, saddles. I guess I can show you uh, all three of them. So here's the dusty rawhide saddle, the painted horse. And as you can see, it takes a little bit to get up to speed, but then it goes reasonably quickly. Not super, super fast, really, but uh, if you are going at full speed, it will 
actually damage enemies. So let's just show you the other ones as well. This is the Royal Gilded Saddle, summons the Majestic Horse, same properties, runs reasonably quickly, and finally the Black Studded Saddle, which summons the Dark Horse. If you want to be, uh, I don't know, intimidating or badass or something. There you go, there's the Dark Horse, or you just want to be different. Um, the Dark Horse Candidate, if you will. So as I say, all three functionally identical. Let's move on then to the Golf Cart. The golf cart is summoned via the golf cart keys. It emits light actually from its front. It reduces fall damage and it increases jump height. It has the fastest pre-hard mode land speed of 41 miles per hour, just a little faster than the horses, and will likewise damage enemies once you get it up to speed. Um, it is slower but still functional in water. You can drive a golf golf court cart in water in Terraria. Uh, it's sold by the golfer for 50 gold after Skeletron has been defeated and you get a golf score of 2000 attain. So you will have to do some golfing if you want the golf cart. <laughs> you need to attain a score of 2000. So let's then demonstrate that. Golf cart keys, golf cart, and vroom vroom. We can zoom along the terraria landscape in our golf cart, which I don't know, I find kind of interesting, amusing, unusual. And there you there you go, it can indeed go in the water. And it's pretty quick. Um, I guess maybe I should go in a cave to show, you can see the headlights there. If I turn away, it's dark. If I turn towards, it lightens it up. So I guess this would be good for driving around at night in terraria as well. Uh, you'll have your headlights to see where you're going. So I find it kind of uh, kind of different and interesting. And there's just one uh, last one that I want to show you for pre-hard mode. And that is the Lava Shark, summoned via the superheated blood item. Uh, the Lava Shark allows you to swim very quickly in lava and other liquids without taking lava damage. So you can uh, take this down to the underworld and swim in the lava and not get hurt. Uh, however, it does not protect you from fire blocks or from drowning when you're in honey or water. It, you won't drown when you're in lava, but you can drown if you're in honey or water. Um, and if you touch uh, like meteorite or hellstone, you will still get hurt from that, but it will just protect you from the lava itself. Uh, this one actually reduces your fall damage to one point and it is very useful for mining hellstone because you can just take it right in the lava and go ahead and mine your hellstone it has a maximum speed of 73 miles per hour in liquids but only 11 miles per hour on land uh, maintains its speed in the air so you can use it to do uh, jumps out of any liquid you can get up to speed in the liquid and jump out and fly out it's about a one in five chance to be found in obsidian or hellstone crates which are obtained by fishing in lava which itself is a somewhat difficult uh, business you need some special accessories to do that covered some of those um, in my recent uh, 1.4 accessories guide and i'll talk about that further later when i do a new fishing guide but anyway let's go ahead and demonstrate the lava shark so indeed pretty slow on land not quite as slow as the turtle mount or the bee um, but close to it but if you get it into liquid it is very very fast <laughs> so you can see that and indeed you can jump out you might need to get a good run at that <laughs> and uh, I guess if you're in the underworld and you have just like little bits of land or something to jump over, that might be a useful ability, which is kind of what they showed actually in the 1.4 trailer. And you can see it kind of gradually loses its speed once it hits land. And so that's the Lava Shark. Pretty interesting uh, mount that could be useful for certain situations. And we'll be moving on to hard mode in just a sec. Okay, so hard mode mounts are a bit of a mishmash of versions and some changes and things. So first one that we're going to talk about actually is the Basilisk. The Basilisk is summoned via the Ancient Horn item. It was added in 1.3.3. So interestingly, this is not currently available on mobile because as of the recording of this video, mobile is still on 1.3.0, uh, but it will be coming with the 1.4 update when mobile does get that, uh, which hopefully should be pretty soon. Uh, the Basilisk has fast acceleration and speed it jumps high plus it reduces fall damage to only one-fifth or 20 percent 
of the original damage. Uh, once it reaches 21 miles per hour, it inflicts 90 charging damage to enemies. It has a maximum speed of 41 miles per hour. It's also resistant to sandstorm winds when moving, and on 1.4 now, it's also been changed so that it now has its own double jump ability as well. It has a rare 1 in 50 chance to be dropped by basilisk enemies in the hard mode underground desert. So, basilisk mount. You can see it's pretty fast and it's suitable to be showing it in the desert since that's where you get it usually. And uh, now, as I say, 1.4, it can also do this uh, double jump thing. And it has that trail to indicate when it's uh, going fast enough to damage enemies. So, kind of a cool mount. Uh, a little more useful now in 1.4. And uh, it also fits into tighter spaces than certain other mounts. So, that's another useful feature of it as well for when you're mining, for instance. But let's move along to another one which doesn't fit in tight spaces so well, the Unicorn, uh, which is summoned via the Blessed Apple. It was added in 1.3, so it's on all updated platforms. It's very fast with a double jump ability, and it is able to damage enemies as well when charging at high speeds. Uh, the damage inflicting speed likewise is indicated by a sparkle effect and a trail. It has a brief invulnerability on impact, which is one thing that kind of sets it apart from other uh, mounts that can do charging damage damage. Uh, the unicorn actually gives you a brief little invulnerability so you don't get hurt by the enemies when you're charging. Uh, the top speed for the unicorn is 61 miles per hour, so indeed quite fast, and it inflicts 80 damage, also reduces fall damage to one-fifth or 20 percent. Uh, in 1.3 versions, it drops from any hallowed enemy. It's a 1 in 200 chance in normal or 1 in 150 in expert. On 1.4, that's been changed, so it now only drops from unicorns with a 1 in 40 chance in normal or a 1 in 30 chance in expert or master to make up for the fact that it's dropping from fewer enemies. So, uh, let's go ahead and demonstrate the unicorn. So again, it uh, takes maybe a little longer to get up to speed. As, as I say, the, uh, and, and yeah, it doesn't fit through tight spaces. There's a way to prove my point. Doesn't fit through there. So it uh, takes a little longer to get up to speed. Basilisk accelerates faster, but when this thing gets going, uh, it really gets going uh, quite well. It can be used uh, for some boss fights if you have a wide open area to run through, as you can see. Uh, tighter areas you're going to be slowing down more but if you have a nice flat area you can use this in a boss fight because it allows you to go pretty fast so that's basically the unicorn mount does some charging damage has that little sparkle effect when you get fast enough and that's that next up the pig Ron mount which is summoned via the scaly truffle. Now this is one that is in all the versions that do have mounts. It's been there since 1.2.4. It has a limited flight ability and runs actually relatively quickly on land as well as flying. So uh, it has a top speed of 46 miles per hour. It cancels fall damage completely. It is obtained by fishing in the cavern layer of an ice biome that overlaps with either the hollow corruption or crimson. So it has to be kind of a combined ice biome or snow biome with uh, hollow corruption or crimson present as well. And you fish in one of those areas and you can get the scaly truffle. So scaly truffle, pig run, and you can see reasonably fast, not so fast as like the unicorn or, or uh, let's see. Um, yeah, it's around the same speed actually as the basilisk uh, technically, it says it should be a little faster, but I don't know if it looks it. <laughs> Has limited flight, and then it gets, I guess, tired. It doesn't show that it looks tired, but it you can see it doesn't fly all that high, actually. In fact, it seems to fly, as of now, not nearly as high as the bee, <laughs> but it does fly a bit, so that is in itself pretty useful. And uh, pig run is available in all the versions that have mounts, so that's an advantage as well. I think actually it's supposed to let off a, a slight amount of light. Uh, I'm not sure about that. Okay, but moving right along, let's talk about the next one, which is 1.4 only, the winged slime. So the winged slime is kind of like a uh, hard mode upgrade to the slime mount, uh, summoned via the gelatinous pillion item. 
so this has increased jump height, auto jumps repeatedly like the slime mount when you hold the jump button, it prevents fall damage, it has faster movement than you normally would yourself, it floats on water, and it can also bounce or stomp enemies from above like the slime mount. has a lot in common with it, but uh, further to all that, it also grants a short two second flight time and can both glide and hover like some wings do. It has a top speed of 33 miles per hour on the ground or 58 in the air. So it's fairly quick in the air. It can increase falling speed up to 102 miles per hour. So again, if you're falling down a elevator or something, if you wanna fall fast, it actually increases your falling speed. And it has a one in four chance to drop from queen slime in normal or a one in two chance in expert or master mode in the treasure bag. I think in the treasure bag. Some drop directly, some don't. Anyway, um, there we are. Winged slime, and there we are. Actually has a, probably a little bit shorter flight time than the pigron, but it can fly, and that's still an advantage. And as you can see, it does move quite quickly in the air. And it floats. <laughs> so all that. Not quite as fast on the ground. And so that's a brand new one for 1.4, the uh, winged slime. Now, last one I'm going to talk about in this segment before I, uh, I'm doing these five at a time <laughs> in terms of the recording. Um, the first mount that was added to the game, the reindeer bells, uh, these were actually added in 1.2.2 and other mounts started to be added on 1.2.4. So um, that doesn't really matter anymore because I don't think there are any versions that are stuck on 1.2.2, but uh, it was the first mount added to the game. It has a high movement speed of 61 miles per hour, which matches the unicorn. And this one, however, has a limited flight time. It can also hover in the air if you hold the down direction while also flying and it cancels fall damage completely. So it uh, has some advantages over the unicorn, but it's extremely difficult to obtain. In fact, some advantages over probably all the mounts uh, that I've covered up to now, but extremely difficult to obtain because it only drops from the Ice Queen and only in wave 15 or onward of the Frost Moon. It also drops at a very tiny rate. So this is an extremely difficult mount to get, uh, but it is a good one um, if you get it at the right time of the game, I guess, and, uh, and a pretty good one, you know, even later in the game, this could be very useful. It's just that you don't see it much because it's hard to get. So let's demonstrate it. You're not going to see it too easily otherwise. So there's the Rudolph mount. Gets up to a pretty good speed eventually. And like Santa Claus riding the sleigh, <laughs> it can fly. So it actually, it, it is a limited flight time, but you know what? It's a pretty good flight time. It was right up until there. Uh, so let's just see how high we can climb with the Rudolph Mount. Actually, I, I just wanted to get rid of that little bit <laughs> that was still mapped. Oh yeah, okay. It's not actually that, that long, uh, but it is a little longer definitely than the wing slime or the pig run. So if we take off from there, we get up about yay high <laughs> and that's the arc let's say of flying around in the rudolph mount and of course it cancels fall damage so we don't have to worry about that so uh one sec and we'll move on to the next group okay so whereas that was the first mount added in the game the rest of the mounts i'm going to talk about in this video are actually available on the updated platforms only added in 1.3 or later first up is the scutlix mount summoned via the brain scrambler item added in 1.3 it has rapid acceleration and a fast land speed of 41 miles per hour it has increased jump fight jump height and uh, reduces fall damage to just one point uh, very maneuverable. Unlike most mounts, it does not slow down underwater, which is useful. And it also auto fires lasers from its eyes, which deal about 100 damage e each, which uh, likewise makes it quite useful. I've used this in boss fights, even though it's not the fastest thing in the world and it can't fly. Um, it is actually useful because of the lasers and the fast maneuverability and depending on your arena setup. It has a 1 in 100 chance to drop from the Skutlix gunner enemy during the Martian Madness event. So let's demonstrate that here and you can see while the wiki says it doesn't slow down in water, you know what, I'm going to say that it actually kind of does. 
So that's uh, one of those times when the wiki maybe isn't perfectly accurate, but um, it is definitely fast, and it's definitely faster than you are without it in the water. You can see, oh, I'm so slow. Put that on, definitely faster. <laughs> and uh, it does have that nice high jump ability. And moves, uh, you can see there's the one health point damage, uh, which it, no matter how high you fall from, you'll just lose that one point, which is almost like eliminating fall damage completely. But let's move on to the next one, which is the UFO. Uh, summoned via the Cosmic Car Key, 1.3 as well, has infinite flight and hovering capability, but it does not work in liquids. Like the B-mount, it will despawn as soon as you touch liquids and will not spawn in liquids. It has a top speed as well of 41 miles per hour in cardinal directions, as in left, right, up, down, uh, but it can move up to 58 miles per hour diagonally. This one drops from the Martian Saucer in the same Martian Madness event. It's a 1 in 9 chance in 1.3 versions, or it's been changed to a 1.6 or a 1 in 6 chance in 1.4. So you have a slightly better chance of getting it in 1.4. Let's demonstrate that at work. Cosmic Car Key, UFO Mount. Go in the water and it goes away. Can't summon it. <laughs> but if you're outside of the water, it flies pretty well. You can just sit there and hover indefinitely. It's fine. Just hanging around. <laughs> so it's a nice one as well if you're, you know, mining or something like that. Uh, you need to stay in a stable position. It's a useful mount in general. And this, of course, is well known for being used for boss fights as well. Although, again, it's not really the fastest thing in the world. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, infinite flight and quite effective in general, which makes it a good option. So, um, let's move on to the next one. The drill mount summoned via the drill containment unit item. So this is 1.3 as well. It's a flying vehicle which mines large areas quickly using lasers. So this really is a mining device. It's not so much a combat mount. Uh, it can fly or float indefinitely like the UFO. However, it does not allow using most weapons while you are mounted. Uh, the exception there being summons that you've already summoned before mounting the uh, mount. Uh, if the summons are already present, then they will continue attacking enemies for you. So that's a good way of using it. Uh, have some summons, some minions, and they will take care of enemies or at least help you with enemies while you fly around mining. Uh, it does not damage enemies itself. It, uh, the top speed actually varies depending which way you're going. It's 31 miles per hour horizontally, 41 miles per hour vertically, and 51 miles per hour diagonally. So it's slower than the UFO if you're going just left or right, same speed up or down, a little bit slower diagonally. Um, it's crafted from 40 each of six different types of bars at a hard mode mithril or orichalcum anvil. So it takes a lot to get this thing. It's the only mount uh, summoning item that's actually crafted. So you will need 40 luminite bars, 40 chlorophyte bars, 40 shroomite bars, 40 specter bars, 40 hellstone bars, and 40 meteorite bars. And of course, some of those in turn require various amounts of ores and other ingredients, plus other crafting stations just to get those bars. So it's not easy to get the drill containment unit. But if you like to do a lot of large scale mining, it's going to be worthwhile. So and of course, normally you'll only get this after you defeat Moonlord because of those Luminite bars. But here we go. Drill containment unit. We can fly around. Again, not quite as fast uh, horizontally as the UFO, but just as fast vertically, which is kind of weird. But here we are. And just to demonstrate, you know, I kind of want to clean up this meteorite here anyway. And yes, I suspended uh, enemy spawns. That's why I'm not getting meteorite heads to fight here. But you can see it mines large areas very quickly <laughs> nice way to clean up a meteorite if you don't want the meteorite around but again you only get this normally after moon lord so you know that might not be uh your number one worry at that point in the game <laughs> but anyway that's the uh meteorite or sorry the drill containment unit it is definitely useful if you want to mine out large areas but moving right along uh the cute fish run actually i'm going to talk about there's just two mounts that are expert mode exclusive um, that can be gotten in expert and of course anything you, you can get in expert can be gotten in master mode as well but you need to be in at least expert for these two um, and i'm going to tell you about some master mode exclusive ones after that but the shrimpy truffle 
uh, summons the cute fish on mount. So this is another um, one that provides infinite flight. It's available since 1.3 if you're in expert mode or master. Uh, in 1.4, of course, master mode was added. Uh, so the cute fish run provides infinite flight. It's extremely slow when touching blocks. So when it's on the ground or when it's otherwise just happens to touch a block. Uh, but it has huge bonuses conversely when it's wet. So it crawls at it the slowest speed of all mounts, only five miles per hour if it's on the ground or touching a block, but has the highest top speed in the game if it's submerged in liquid. The base flight speed is 33 miles per hour on 1.3. Uh, it's been upgraded a little bit to 40 miles per hour on 1.4, but that is boosted in either case to 66 miles per hour when it is wet or when the player is below 50% health. So that's another place where the boost kicks in, not just when it's wet. Um, and it can be up to 82 miles per hour when it's fully submerged. It counts as wet for six seconds after leaving liquids. It works in water, honey, or lava, although it will not pro protect you from lava. Um, it also provides you a 15% damage boost when it is boosted by being wet or your health is below 50% or it's submerged. Uh, all of those scenarios, not only do you get a speed boost, but you also get a 15% damage boost, which is huge as well. Um, the eyes will glow to indicate that the speed and damage boosts are active, and the color of the eyes interestingly matches the watercolor of the current biome. Uh, in 1.4, another little change, it has uh, been modified now so that the boosts are also activated in the rain, because that makes sense, right? Rain should count as wet, so if it's raining in 1.4, you will also get those boosts now. Uh, because of the speed and damage boost when wet, it can be very effective for boss fights with the right setup. You can build a fully flooded arena, or you can use bubbles um, to surround little uh, pools, let's say, of liquids, um, including water or honey, or I guess lava if you're a masochist, um, or you can just wait for rain to do a boss fight. And in those scenarios, it can be a very useful mount to uh, fight the later game bosses. Later game, because the shrimpy truffle is always included in Duke Fishron's treasure bag, again, in expert or master mode. Uh, personally, one of my favorites to take on, even Moon Lord, actually, I like to use the shrimpy truffle. But that does require, you know, either waiting for rain and hoping that it stays or uh, setting up uh, an arena that has that um, wetness. So you can see, again, very slow on land. You can actually see the flippers crawling. But if I get it up in the air, it's reasonable. It's actually not as fast as the UFO in when it's dry. But if I come down here and get it wet, well, now he's excited and now I can really fly. So uh, this is where you'll get that advantage. And you can see that wore off. I can just dip in liquid again, get a nice speed boost. And if I'm fully submerged, it actually goes even faster. And you can see the one advantage of this is that it's highly uh, maneuverable as well. It's, um, I don't think it's particularly more maneuverable than the UFO relative to its speed, but with the boost, the water boost uh, being wet, it is faster than the UFO. And that's why I like it personally. So uh, that's the cute fish run, the shrimpy truffle item. And so we're going to move on now to things that are available in 1.4 only. I'm going to go to one just quickly now, and that is the Witch's Broom. So the Witch's Broom is the only one that's added in 1.4 that is expert exclusive. Again, expert or master mode, uh, but you can get this in expert as well as master mode. It provides infinite flight and hovering. Generally works much like the UFO mount. Has the same general speed and everything. Uh, same 41 miles per hour top speed and 58 diagonally. Uh, same maneuvering, but this one, unlike the UFO, works in liquids and also fits into smaller spaces. It doesn't take up as much space as the UFO, and uh, you don't have to worry about it despawning if you touch liquids or if you're in liquid. Um, this only exists in 1.4 and can be dropped by Morningwood in the Pumpkin Moon uh, when you're playing in Expert or Master modes. So uh, the item and the mount have the same name, like the pogo stick way back, uh, but you can see that unlike the pogo stick, it's actually a different icon for the item in the mount itself. But here we are. Let's uh, check it out. 
So this one again is actually very useful, can be uh, good for boss fights, it's not as fast as a boosted cute fish run, but it's uh, readily available, works in all situations, you don't need to uh, create any kind of special arena, you don't need to worry about avoiding liquid, it still works in the liquid. You can see it does take a speed hit, but it works. So uh, that's a very useful one, and this is a little more useful if you're like exploring underground or mining or something. Because again, not only do you not have to worry about the liquids, but you can actually fit this in smaller spaces as well. So very useful mount, uh, and it's expert or master exclusive. Okay, and the last group that I'm going to talk about are the Master Mode 1.4 exclusive mounts. These are only available if you're on 1.4 and you're playing in Master Mode. So first up among those is the Book Mount. I'm skipping actually way back in terms of progression in the game because this one actually technically you can get this in pre-hard mode. Uh, it is the Dark Mage's Tome uh, item that summons the book mount. Uh, it hovers at a fixed height of eight blocks above the ground for five seconds and then it will just uh, kind of glide along the ground itself. It can also float lower by holding down when it is hovering in the air. Uh, and because it kind of floats or hovers, it also cancels fall damage completely as well. Uh, it has a top speed of 41 miles per hour in either case, whether it's above or on the ground. And it has a one in four chance to drop from the Dark Mage boss enemy in the Old Ones Army event when you're playing in 1.4 Master Mode only. So let's have a look at that. Dark Mage's Tome, and uh, there we go, the book mount. If I kind of jump in this, that's when it kind of goes up above the ground, and it just stays there for a little bit. So if I demonstrate this, let's say on the water, oh, I'm floating above the water, floating above the water, and then down. <laughs> it does not float on the surface of the water. Uh, in fact, it's kind of hard to get out of there. But uh, there you go, and I can also like lower where it's actually... Yeah, it's kind of weird because I think there's a cooldown there as well, but once I'm floating, I can lower where exactly I'm floating. I, it's kind of a weird ability. <laughs> it's kind of a weird mount, really. Uh, but it's interesting, and you can get this early, and it allows you to glide along uh, quite quickly uh, in pre-hard mode. So this actually ties for the fastest pre-hard mode uh, speed, along with the golf cart, has the same speed. And it doesn't exactly fly, but it sort of floats, and it's kind of odd, but interesting. So that's uh, that's the book mount. And let's talk about the next one that you can get in Master Mode that's exclusive, the Goat Mount, which is summoned via the Goat Skull. Uh, technically, this is a hard mode uh, mount because it drops from the Wall of Flesh. It is a rideable skeleton goat, which is functionally identical to the Unicorn Mount. It takes up, um, I think, one block higher in terms of space. Uh, so it takes up slightly more space, I think. Uh, but it's very fast, has double jump, does charge damage once you get it up to speed. It's indicated rather than nice uh, unicorn sparkles, the uh, skeleton goat gets flames. It gets a nice flame trail. And it has, uh, like the unicorn, a brief invulnerability on impact. Its top speed, again, is 61 miles per hour, tying the unicorn. It inflicts 80 damage, likewise, and reduces fall damage the same way to one-fifth or 20%. Again, one in four chance to drop from the wall of flesh if you're playing 1.4 Master Mode. So uh, it's a little bit, if anything, easier to get, you might say. You have a chance, a uh, reasonable chance of getting it just by fighting the wall of flesh in Master Mode. But here we go. The goat looks kind of scary. Gets a flame trail when it gets up to speed, has that um, double jump ability, and once it has that flame trail, you will also be able to damage enemies. Does not fly, does not float, just charges enemies and runs fast. So uh, basically, again, same thing as Unicorn, but that's what it is. So uh, next one. The Pirate Ship, summoned via the Black Spot item. This is actually an incredibly useful mount, uh, which I'll get to in a second. It flies infinitely at a very high speed, although it is somewhat slow to maneuver. It does not turn uh, particularly fast, um, does not dodge 
<laughs> up and down particularly fast but it ties for the fastest maximum speed in the game at 82 miles per hour horizontally. It can also do 41 miles per hour vertically or 91 diagonally. Uh, once it reaches sufficient speed, it can also inflict charging damage, which is unusual for a flying mount. It inflicts 100 ramming damage, which is, again, like the others, indicated by a sort of particle trail. Uh, ties again for fastest speed with the submerged cute fish run but does not need to get wet it is not as agile however so it does not require water uh, it is as fast but it's not as agile it's not as easy to maneuver but it uh, can be obtained relatively early in hard mode which makes it very useful against many bosses if you obtain it early enough uh, it can also eliminate the need to build special arenas particularly for the mechanical bosses because uh, well, it flies, and you can get it early in hard mode. So it's a 1 in 4 chance to drop from the Flying Dutchman. Uh, again, 1.4 Master Mode only. So uh, you need to fight a pirate invasion, and you need to defeat a Flying Dutchman. Uh, you may need to, feed a, to defeat a bunch of them. It's a 1 in 4 chance. You're not guaranteed to get it that easily. Uh, so you can try your luck, try to get the black spot. Uh, I did find this very, very useful when fighting um, master mode, early hard mode bosses, queen slime, mechanical bosses, and so on. There is the pirate ship. And yeah, um, that's the only thing that it's kind of slow to turn, you can see. Kind of slow to turn, kind of slow to dodge up and down. Uh, but it's still fast enough that you can use this in place of, say, an asphalt bridge or something. You can see I'm bouncing off things because I can't dodge up and down too easily. Uh, but you can use this against the mechanical bosses, just mostly going in a single direction. Uh, Queen Slime, it can work as well, and so on. Um, I, yeah, in fact, uh, this can even be used against, like, Plantera and... Uh, you know, potentially later as well. Eventually, I would suggest later in hard mode, you may want to replace it with uh, Cute Fish Run, which I prefer personally just because it has faster maneuvering and so on. Uh, but the pirate ship is seriously useful and really helps you avoid wasting a lot of time um, building arenas when you're in master mode. So there's just two more that I'm going to talk about now. And uh, these are sort of interesting because they're late hard mode, master mode, exclusive but they're ground based both of them so uh first up between those is the tree mount which is summoned via the hexed branch item it has a top speed of 81 miles per hour but it is ground based so it's the fastest ground based um mount actually and it's just barely slower than um the two fastest air based mount it is very maneuverable though it uh, accelerates very quickly it uh, can jump and it's um it actually once it gets to full speed, it will inflict 120 to damage to uh, enemies in its path. has that charging damage, and I believe that's actually the highest charging damage as well. It's a 1 in 4 chance to drop from Morningwood during the Pumpkin Moon um, in 1.4 Master Mode, which is actually odd as well because most items that drop during uh, the Pumpkin Moon and the Frost Moon have a variable rate. This one actually does not. It's a 1 in 4 chance. Simple. So let's have a look at it in action. Hex branch, the tree looks like morning wood itself. And you can see like it's, it's quite fast. So uh, if you don't mind being stuck on the ground and you can see it doesn't get slowed down too much in water either. So I don't know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. Whee! <laughs> and it also, uh, does it, let's see, did I even put that on the slide? Yeah, it does reduce fall damage to 10% as well. So uh, one-tenth of the regular value. I thought I remembered that. And um, that's actually very useful too. That it, it doesn't eliminate it. It doesn't reduce it to one, but it reduces it by a larger percentage uh, or to a smaller amount than any of the other ones that don't eliminate it or reduce it to one. <laughs> so that's kind of odd as well. It's kind of an odd one. Um, and I think there might be some interesting scenarios where you could use that. But anyway, moving right along, the last mount I'm going to talk about is the sand tank. <laughs> Santa ank? 
No, sand tank. I'm, I'm going to go with sand tank there. So it's summoned by, by the toy tank item. It is basically a smaller rideable Santa NK-1 with double jump and weapons. It has both a machine gun and a rocket launcher. The weapons automatically target enemies that are in front of it, and the rockets will home in on whatever enemy is closest, whether it's in front or behind. So it has a max speed of 41 miles per hour. It also jumps high and reduces fall damage to 1, um, also, this one can fit in small spaces, so it's a good one probably for places like the dungeon or the jungle temple, although uh, probably you would normally do those before getting it. Uh, but anyway, um, it is interesting and useful in its own way as well. Uh, it, unlike the... Uh, the one from Morning Wood. It is a variable rate drop from Santa NK1 during the Frost Moon in 1.4 Master Mode, uh, but it is a reasonably high drop rate, so uh, if you fight enough sand kit Santa NK1s, you do have a reasonable chance of getting it. Uh, might take you a while, but it's it's doable. It's not one of those things like Rudolph that's nearly impossible. So <laughs> let's uh, demonstrate this. Now, first of all, I am going to bring some enemies back in so that you can um, actually see what it does so let's uh let's even increase the enemy spawn rate a little i don't want to do it too high but here we go sand tank boom sand tank blowing them away take them out sand tank kill them all <laughs> so uh yeah i mean it's moderately powerful the weapons are are effective if you're you know somewhere where you need to worry about enemies attacking you you can see though enemies can sneak up behind you um and you do have to watch that because it only targets enemies in front or it only fires when enemies are in front uh that being said if it fires at something in front and it launches a rocket that rocket actually can target things behind you so interesting one and you know what while we're at it i may as well show because i never showed the lasers from the brain scrambler so uh the scut licks so let's show off the lasers too because i if i recall correctly those are the only two that actually fire stuff so uh yeah brain scrambler is fun as well i enjoy it <laughs> lasers are uh, are quite accurate and fast so those two uh mounts are interesting in their attack abilities but um hope you like the video that's uh, all i really have to show for now so uh we'll see you next time and um i'll give you links in the description uh I guess timestamps aren't that useful at this point, but hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.